Ivan Zoot, and welcome to another Jatai Academy video. Today, let's have a conversation about how much do you charge for a haircut? How do you set the price for a shave? Or a hair color service, or any other service for that matter. And you know, there's different ways of going about doing it. Some are better than others. Some you should really avoid. Traditionally, in the professional beauty and barber industry, prices are established using a tool. And that tool is the telephone. It's time to open up a shop, you pick up a telephone, you call seven shops in the area. How much is your haircut? Click. How much is your haircut? Click. You add up all those prices, maybe you call seven shops, you add up all the prices and divide by seven, and you come up with the average haircut price in the community. Well, then what do you do? If you're not so sure of yourself and not so confident, you price one dollar less than the average. If you're maybe a little more enthusiastic and passionate about who you are and what you do, you price one dollar more than the average in the community. And my advice to you is this, do not allow one person's bad decision to serve as the foundation for your next decision. You don't know how the guy down the street established his price. You don't know why the guy down the street set his price where he did. You don't know his rent. You don't know his expenses. You don't know his cost of labor. You don't know his profit motivation. You don't know anything about how and why he runs his business or why his haircut price wound up where it did. And using his price as the foundation for yours only establishes what we call a race to the bottom. Walmart started that and no one wins. Everybody, there's always gonna be somebody willing to charge less. Here's my suggestion. When it's time to price a haircut, the first question you need to answer is the question, how much does it cost me to do a haircut? I love asking that question to beauty and barber professionals. How much does it cost you to do a haircut? And frequently when I ask that question, I get answers like, doesn't cost anything, I just do haircuts. Doesn't cost me anything, and that's just not true. There are costs associated with doing a haircut. There is the rent, and the lights, and the consumable liquids, the laundry detergent you use to clean the towels, the neck strips, the sanitizing solutions. There are real costs associated with doing a haircut. You could even say there's opportunity costs associated with a haircut, because if you're doing a haircut, you're not doing something else. And that time could be used productively in some other endeavor. So the first thing you need to know is, how much does it cost you to do a haircut? I'm not going to get really complicated with the math, I'm going to keep it very simple. But it works like this. How many haircuts can you do in an hour? Let's say you can do two. How many hours do you work in a day? Let's say you're going to work 10 hours a day. 10 hours a day, two haircuts an hour, that's 20 haircuts a day. If you're going to work five days a week, that means you can do 100 haircuts per week. That is your maximum capacity. Now, if you want to calculate this on a weekly basis, the next question is what are your weekly expenses? If you rent a chair in a shop or if you pay rent in a building, you need to know what your monthly and then divide it out by weekly rent is. And then you need to do that exercise with every other expense you have. If you keep good books and you have a balance sheet and you can check this out, add up all of your expenses for a month and divide by four. That will give you your total monthly expenses. Divide that number by 100 in our example or whatever is your total number of available haircut spaces per week and you now have the magic number. How much does it cost me to do a haircut? That's powerful information. Let's just say for the sake of conversation today, we did that math exercise and we determined that it costs us $3 to deliver a haircut. That is a real number, real cost. Okay, the first thing I'll share with you is we know immediately a haircut must be priced at at least $3 and one penny or you're losing money. Put that on the shelf and consider that for a moment. And now let's ask the second half of the question. The second half of the question is how much money do you want to make? this week, this month, or this year. Let's say for the sake of conversation, you would like to earn $120,000 this year. That comes out to $10,000 a month. Four weeks in a month, that's $2,500 a month. Now we're gonna, or $2,500 a week. We're gonna divide that $2,500 by 100 
haircuts that we can do. And in order to hit that $125,000 in annual income, our simple math problem tells us your haircut needs to cost $25 or contain $25 profit. That's the second half of the equation. If you follow along with me on the math, what we now know, in order for you to earn $125,000 a year, your haircut must cost $25 plus $3 to cover your fixed costs. Meaning, in that scenario, in order to make the money you set out to make, you must charge a minimum of $28. Now that you know that, pick up the phone. Call seven shops in your area, ask how much a haircut is, and determine the local average price for a haircut. Because if you've determined, based on your profit motivation and your real cost structure, that a haircut in your shop must cost $28, and you find out that the average price in your community is $30, you're golden. You can charge $28, you're slightly lower than market average, you're going to run a fabulous business and everyone will be happy. However, what happens if you go through that exact same exercise and you find out that the average price for a haircut in your community is 25? But wait a minute, you're building your future plans on $120,000 income and $3 cost per haircut, that puts you at 28. You're now $3 over the market average. Can you do that? Can you open a shop and charge $3 more than the average price in your community? You betcha. Yes, you can. However, you will need to do some work to determine what is your unique selling proposition. What is it that sets you apart from every other shop and every other hair cutter? Where are you adding unique value to your customer experience and to your business? Because when you hone in on that and you focus on promoting that, people will gladly pay you more than the average price in your community because you are delivering an above average experience at an above average level of quality and you can easily command your price. But bottom line, do not let one person's bad decision serve as the foundation for your next decision. Make your business decisions with facts, information, and the real pieces of data that you need to achieve your goals. If you go through that entire exercise and you discover that $28 just doesn't work, can you lower your expenses? Perhaps maybe for a period of time you need to lower your income expectations. There are variables within the equation that can help you arrive at a number that works. But don't just pick up the phone, pick up your pencil, pick up your calculator, and make good business decisions. I'm Ivan Zoot for the Jatai Academy. Thank you for watching this video. I look forward to helping you build and grow your business many different ways. Have a wonderful day.